Thank you for being here. Yes, so yesterday we had a, a very nice session. And I don't have any slides, by the way. I'm just going to go right into the demos because I have a lot I want to show you. But we had a session yesterday where we showed some of the new things that have been launched in uh, governance and compliance. It was a well-attended session, and the purpose of this demo is just to show some of the things that we announced there. The first thing I want to show you is um, the new features of digital sovereignty for AWS Control Tower. You guys familiar with AWS Control Tower? Yes, no, yeah? <laughs> Very good. So let me show you what this is about. This is the Control Tower dashboard. And uh, if you go here into the controls library, where we have all the controls that you can enable for Control Tower, um, in the category section, you can see all the different categories that we have for uh, the controls. And, uh, okay. This is a, it's usually what happens when you're doing a live demo, right? <laughs> Things break. All right, let's see. So you can see here that in the categories, we have um, four tabs. One is the control objectives, and control objectives is a grouping that allows us to define some of the things that are common across the different um, requirements, frameworks. So those we call control objectives. You can see we have a total of 15 control objectives. This has all been there uh, for a while. Services is a different grouping that shows you um, the different controls by services. And, uh, and then we have frameworks, which basically uh, focuses on specific uh, regulatory frameworks. And you see we have three frameworks and the different type of controls. What's new is this new grouping here called groups. And if you click on it, you'll see we have this new grouping or this new group called digital sovereignty. And you can see here that it has 10 control objectives and it's made up of 246 uh, controls that are going to help you with your digital sovereignty requirements. And if I click in there, I get a list of all the controls that are part of this group. As you can see, it's a total of 246 controls. And if I um, go here, I can look for a specific control. So there's one control that I want to show you that is new. It's a control to deny access based on an organizational unit. This is a feature a lot of our customers requested in Control Tower. So this will allow me to enable a specific region at an OU level. So if I click on that control, I can see if it's indeed enabled for any OUs right here. And um, it shouldn't be enabled for anything. So if I wanted to enable this control of allowing certain regions for an OU, I can go to Enable Control. I can select a specific region. I'm just going to pick one of the ones that I have here. I'm sorry, a specific OU. And then I can select a specific region that I want to enable for that OU. And that's it. It's going to create my um, policy right here that is going to be implemented. I have the option of adding not actions. So if I wanted to exclude certain actions for certain IAM principles, I could do that here. And I could specify also overrides for IAM principles for which this doesn't apply. Another cool thing that we can do is uh, add tags. This is another new feature. And I'm going to add a tag of environment test. And I'm going to enable the control. And that's it. Basically, what I've done for that specific OU, now I've enabled uh, that specific region. So all the accounts that are part of that OU will inherit that setting. So that's a new thing that we just released, um, digital sovereignty and the uh, region exclusion uh, based on OU. The other thing I want to show you is, and I have my cheat sheet. I have to go uh, here real quick. <laughs> it's with AWS Config. So AWS Config is a managed service that allows you to track the resources in your accounts. And uh, with AWS Config, you can not only have an inventory of all your resources, but you can also deploy rules that evaluate the state of a resource, again, a desired state for compliance process purposes. So this will allow you to craft controls for specific regulatory requirements. Now the new feature in, in the recorded settings is Config has traditionally allowed you to 
um, exclude, uh, or not exclude, but decide which resources you're going to track. The problem traditionally with that option was that um, you, once you decide, oh, I want to track only these resources, then you own managing that list. So whenever we release new resource coverage, you wouldn't get it automatically. What customers wanted was an exclusion. Customers wanted, hey, you know what, I want to track everything, but let's say EC2 instances. Now, why is that important? Well, think for example of some accounts or environments where you have ephemeral workloads. In those environments, you're not necessarily that interested in the instantiation of the resource more than you are on the definition of the resource. Think of an EKS cluster, think of an ECS cluster, an EMR job. All the security settings that you are interested in from a compliance or security perspective are already defined on the job, on the pod, on the service, on the task. So when the instance comes up, it's always going to come with the same settings. So in those environments, generating a large amount of EC2 configuration items is probably not that efficient. So a lot of customers ask for an option, hey, can I just exclude that on those ephemeral workloads uh, accounts? So that we, we just announced the ability to do um, resource exclusion by type. And the way you enable that, let me show you real quick. You go into the settings of the recorder, and now you have two options. Now, the option on the right is the traditional way we've done things, where you have to explicitly say what you want to track. And on the left, you have the new way of doing things, which by default is track everything. I want everything on. But you may decide, you know what? I want to um, add a specific resource type that I want to exclude. Remember I was telling you about instance, right? There's EC2 instance, and now I can choose exclude from recording. And then I save my recorder, and now config is going to track everything except EC2 instances. And if next month we release a new service and we add coverage for it in config, it's going to pick up that service automatically. You don't have to do anything, but it will continue to exclude EC2 instance. It's super powerful for ephemeral workloads. Now the other thing that we released um, just a couple days ago is um, periodic recording. There are some use cases where a customer may want to have a snapshot of the environment every 24 hours, right? Some use cases for that. So what you can do is that you can change your daily recording here or periodic recording. So maybe you have an account where there's very low activity or you just use it for training purposes or for whatever reason. You don't need that detailed tracking of every single resource. You can set daily recording. But the other thing you could do is you can add some resources, let's say like a network interface. I'm gonna, the EC2 instance I want to exclude, but this one I'm going to set to daily recording. That's the overwrite that I'm going to do. So you have those two options you can play with in the overwrite. You can either say exclude completely or you can say record only daily. That's a couple of new features that we just released uh, yesterday and we're very excited about. All right, moving on, let me show you another cool feature. So one of the ways customers use config is by setting up what we call an aggregator. An aggregator allows you to take all the accounts and all the regions in your organization and centralize the config data into a single place that you can query, that you can analyze to gain insights for compliance purposes, for operational purposes. This setting uh, of this feature of Advanced Query has been available for quite some time. And we have a number of uh, pre-canned queries that you can pick of things you may be looking for. But this tool was so powerful uh, and customers wanted more out of it. Essentially, the way it works is that you write a SQL query, as you can see here, with what you're looking for. SQL is very well known. A lot of people know how to use it. But if you're like me, every time I'm going to write a query, I have to go, I have to go Google it because I, I forgot some detail about it. The other thing is that you may know SQL, but you may not know or understand the schema of, of the config data. So that, that creates a little bit of a learning curve, and we wanted to make that easier for customers. So what we released is natural language processing for advanced query. And with this feature, as you can see here, when you create a new query, 
The first thing I'm going to do is select uh, my aggregator. This is my aggregator that's centralizing all the data. And then uh, I can just, in plain English, say what I want. So I'm going to type, show all the security groups with port 22 open. That is very plain English, right? <laughs> so I click generate. And in the background, we use generative AI to take what you enter there and craft a SQL query based on the schema for AWS config advanced query. And now I can just click here on populate to editor. And it's put here. Now I have the option of slightly modifying the query. Now that I understand the schema, what it's looking for, it's a very powerful way of learning how this works. I can say, okay, I just want to run it just like that. Let's run it. And there are all my security groups with uh, port 22 open. I can choose to export this data, save it for further analysis. So that's another cool feature that we released uh, at this reInvent. The other thing I wanted to show you real quick is um, CloudTrail Lake. And the uh, CloudTrail Lake is a very powerful addition to CloudTrail that uh, autom automates the process of ETLing the data and making it ready for querying. Um, let me go real quick here to CloudTrail Lake. So with CloudTrail Lake, once you enable it, you can either do it for a single account, single region, or for your entire organization, all accounts, are all regions, central access CloudTrail Lake data. Now what's new with CloudTrail Lake? Two key things. Number one, we've added the ability of federation using Athena. So what that allows you to do is by just checking a box, let me uh, show you real quick here. So I can go in here, Lake Federation, enable, and use a role. And what that does is it goes into Athena, it creates a new database and a table that connects to your Lake event data store. Now what we use that for? Well, if you already have data, like cost and usage report that you're querying with Athena, and you wanted to correlate that information with the data that you have in Lake, this makes it very easy because now from Athena, you can go in and uh, query the data. Let me show you how that looks. So I'm right here in Athena, and there's this new database called AWS CloudTrail, and it has this table. That table corresponds to the CloudTrail Lake event data store. So now we can run a query like this that gives me a total of the top API calls. And I'm hitting on the back end um, CloudTrail Lake. So this is not only useful because now you can um, correlate data that you already have in Athena, but the other powerful thing with this feature is that now you can visualize things in QuickSight. So you can take the data, put it in QuickSight, so all the queries that you can create in uh, CloudTrail uh, Lake, now you can very easily export them and uh, use them in uh, QuickSight. So this is another very powerful tool. If I wanted to do that, I could go to data sets. I could say create a new data set. I'm going to choose Athena. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to validate the connection. Create a data source. And uh, I'm going to select um, the database CloudTrail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a SQL statement that I have already prepared and I have here to create the data. Confirm query. And I'm going to visualize it. Now my data in QuickSight is connected to Athena that then is connected to CloudTrail Lake, and I can do visualizations. Let's create something cool here. So I'm going to take the event name, drop it in there, give it a few seconds, and then I'm going to drop the API count also. Um, okay. Maybe this didn't work. 
much time I have left. Let me reload. I think I lost my connection. All right. Um, let's try to add it again. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Finally worked. So let me add the API count to the bottom here. And this will visualize the top 10 API calls that are being done, which is the query that I ran for that. It's a very easy way of connecting all those pieces so that you can visualize data. Now keep in mind that CloudTrail Lake not only supports CloudTrail data, it supports AWS config data, it supports integrations with third-party audit data, uh, CrowdStrike, Wiz. So think of the possibilities of now centralizing all your audit data, being able to create it from Athena, and also being able to visualize it. So that's it, that's the features I wanted to show you. We have four minutes for questions. If anybody has any questions, happy to uh, take some of those.